Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Linux Renaissance. I'm just joking. Let's go ahead and install free EBSD. Let me. Catch my keyboard that I have displaced. Okay, so the first thing you want to press is the F12 key if you are on a Lenovo computer. If you're something else, uh, well, go press something else to get the boot, um, the boot choice uh, for your computer. And you have already uh, plugged in a USB stick on which you have flashed the installer for the FreeBSD version 15. Uh, whether you have downloaded the, the uh, image that is 1.5 gigabytes, uh, which you can fit on any 2 gigabytes drive, or whether you have downloaded the CD image.iso or the DVD image.iso, doesn't matter. When you get to this point, just press enter on install, uh, choose your keyboard layout. This is going to be important so that you don't uh, have different keys that what uh, are printed on your keycaps. Uh, I have chosen US layout for myself. The host name for your machine is going to be Bunny. Okay. Um, okay. So this is a choice between the old system distribution sets and the new system packages. If you're coming from Linux, then packages is going to um, give you a little bit more familiar vibe, while the distribution sets are basically. Uh, how the FreeBSD as a complete operating system just sits on your hard disk while the all, all of the third party software comes in form of packages. If you choose packages here, uh, then everything is going to be packaged as packages. This will remind you a lot of Apt from Debian, Pacman from uh, the Arch Linux um, DNF from Fedora stuff like that. So in this video, I'm going to, going to go with a new system just to show it around uh, a little bit. So let's click on packages. Do we want to do the offline install or the network install? Let's go with the network install. This one is going to give us uh, more. Good. So here you're going to choose your networking device, uh, which you're going to use the fetch. Uh, everything from the internet. Uh, let's go with the wireless interface. Do you wish, do you wish to change the regulatory domain? Yeah, I'm going to go with Etsy here and pick my country from somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow. Okay. It's going to scan for the available SSIDs around me and let's go with the Dart and my password. There we go. That's my Wi-Fi password for my hotspot here. Good. So here you're going to choose your file system. I would recommend ZFS uh, if you don't know which one to choose, but you're not going to be any wronger uh, if you choose UFS. Uh, if you know which file system you want, then uh, you don't really need this video, correct? So just choose a ZFS here, press enter, change your swap size to your best judgment um, from the way that you use Linux, uh, and go back to the install options. If you have only one SSD or a hard drive, just choose the stripe option here, press space on your SSD and then press enter to continue. Do you wish to destroy the entire hard drive? Yes, uh, it is definitely going to destroy all the data on your drive. So make sure to make a backup. Good. Uh, minimal set of packages suitable for a multi-user system. So you will need to install the base system. Uh, kernel debug and lib32, that's optional, uh, but basically you can just press enter here. Here we go. Uh, please select the password for the system management account root. Okay. R O O T. Don't do that. R O O T. Good. Select the region here. Let's go to Europe. Let's go to Croatia. Um, Central European time. Yes. 
Okay, the date looks okay, so let's skip that. The time looks okay, let's skip that as well. SSH daemon, you're probably going to want to have that so that you can remotely connect into your computer. Um, do you want to automatically synchronize network time? Yes. Do you want to automatically sync uh, on startup even if it's not, uh, even if the offset is really big uh, so that it corrects your time? Probably yes. Uh, local caching, well, uh, you, you don't need that. This is going to give you headaches if you don't know what you're doing. So let's just skip that one for now. If you're using a laptop, then uh, go ahead and choose the power daemon so that you can adjust uh, the battery usage. Uh, do you want a mouse pointer in the console? Probably not. Uh, but if you really want to, you can do that. Um, crash dumps to var crash. You can disable this if you want. Um, you, you don't have to. Um, none of these security hardening options are something that, as a beginner, you would have to wreck your head against. So you can skip uh, the uh, options uh, right now and maybe look into this on some other install. Just press enter here. It says probing devices. This is where it's going to install the firmware uh, for your Wi-Fi card, uh, uh, for your graphics card. If it has any other uh, stuff to install, just press OK here. Uh, it will detect everything that it can uh, take care of throughout the installer. If it cannot, chances are that you're not going to be able to use this device anyway, unless it's NVIDIA. Uh, for NVIDIA, you're going to need uh, custom drivers from NVIDIA. Would you like to add users to the installed system now? Yes. Okay, type your username, Dart, your full name, Linux Renaissance. Okay, UID, just press enter here. Login group, just press enter. Um, do you wish to invite Dart to other groups? Okay, type a video here like video uh, and the reason for that is if you're going to use a desktop environment such as uh, hyperland kd plasma in valent mode uh, you're going to be needing to have your user as a part of the video group so that you get the rights to display stuff on your monitor that's um, the shortest uh, way i can explain it but just type video here so that, that you don't have to do it uh, later on, T press enter, login class default, shell, whatever. Uh, you don't uh, care about that right now. I mean, if you install bash or zsh uh, later, you are going to have to change it anyway uh, because it's not built in. So just press enter here. Home directory is usually fine. Um, default permissions. Uh, do you wish to use ZFS encryption? or your username, I'm gonna leave it up to you. If you do that, um, you're going to have to tinker a little bit. Um, Password-based authentication, probably yes. Uh, use an empty password, probably no. Use a random password, nope, and enter your password here. Do you wish to lock your account so that you cannot use it? Probably no. Uh, is this okay? Yep, press enter here. Do you wish to add another user? Probably no, press enter here. And at this point, just press finish. Uh, and um, do you wish to uh, make any other changes through the shell? Nope. And let's reboot the system. When the system reboots, uh, eject your USB stick uh, so that you don't boot from it by accident. Okay. There we go. The system is now going to boot for the first time. Here we go. Let's log in as root and the password root. You can try to ping the uh, Cloudflare DNS to see that your internet is working. And if you want to install any software uh, package, install Vim. Here we go. Here we go. And you are now installing Vim. Vim press yes here. Good. This is how you install packages on FreeBSD. So congratulations, you have now installed uh, a fresh FreeBSD version 15.
um but well you can um, stay with me for another video uh it's going to be linked uh, uh this side i think <laughs> uh and uh you know this is going to be about how to install your gui or hyperland a window manager on your fresh free bsd install so that's going to be another video i have split them uh, intentionally so that you see how easy it is uh, to install the base system i'm going to see you in the next video thank you very much for watching